Uh, and prayer, intercession, or that is the, their heart, you know, and, and it's wonderful. And as a church, you know, we are called for revival, amen? God gave me the word to be a catalyst for revival, which yes. means uh, revival comes only as a result of prayer, not activity, amen? Yes. And as we pray, you know, we have other churches that are all praying together. You, we fill up the, 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 the bowl, amen? Yes. When the time is right, you'll turn it down and pour it to come upon us. So we just keep uh, praying it in. How long it will take, uh, we do not know. Amen? But uh, we just pray. We are contributing. And I believe that God just doesn't do it as a one-time thing. But as we pray, you know, God will begin to touch our nation. Hallelujah. Amen. Touch our families. And things will happen. Hallelujah. And sometimes I just want to say, sometimes God's work is not... Uh, uh, releasing answers, sometimes God's work is withholding evil. Yes. Amen? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen? So the answer may not have come, the answer may not have arrived at our shores, in our lives, in our families, but God's work is also withholding the enemy so the enemy is not overpowering the situation. Hallelujah. So uh, all our prayers, sometimes when we pray and we see, we don't see the changes uh, in our families, our child, or whatever it is. Uh, but the grace of God is working to be told the evil one doing more damage than it can be done. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what prayer does as well. Sometimes we don't recognize that. That's a work of prayer. When we pray, God restrains the enemy. Amen. He restrains the enemy. He, the damn enemy could have done much more worse, but he's unable to do much more worse. He's held back because God is holding back. Sometimes God holds back. Hallelujah. At other times, God releases the answers. Whatever God is doing, God will do everything in his time. Hallelujah. Just keep praying. Just keep believing, you know. Don't give up hope, you know. Trust in the Lord. Amen. And uh, as we pray, God works. And that's why prayer is important. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to take two passages of scriptures to talk about that. One is the first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Somebody caught it already. Have you got it? Can you read it? Nobody's that fast. Then you got it. Hi. No, y'all are slow. No, I think we need it Okay, it, it, it speaks about the rapture, and Paul is speaking about the rapture, and he speaks in this voice. My God, time is flying. Um, I say unto you, I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that that which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent those which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend with heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then that of us which are alive and remain together shall be caught up with him in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So shall, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with that. So this is the passage of uh, the doctrine of uh, the rapture comes place. And, uh, and uh, Jesus said that he'll come and take his uh, uh, children to himself. And uh, the Bible says that uh, he's coming for his bride. Hallelujah. He's a bridegroom, but he's, he's coming for the bride. But I also want to take you to another passage of scripture. This is a long one. Matthew chapter 25. Um, um, uh, it's about the story of the ten virgins. Uh, most of you would know, but I just thought I'll, I'll read that. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 and 9. And the kingdom of heaven shall be unto... Uh, ten virgins which shall which took up lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise five were foolish and that they were foolish took uh, their lambs and 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 took no oil but those who were wise took oil in their vessels with the lambs and uh, when the while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh amen at midnight take a note of that we'll come back to that particular verse behold the bridegroom cometh go out to meet him then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise give us some oil for our lamps have gone out but the uh, wise one answered saying unto the not so lest we don't have enough for ourselves and for you but rather go into the marketplace and buy some for yourself 
uh, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and uh, they, they were ready, those that were ready went in and uh, we came to the marriage and the uh, door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, uh, uh, but he answered and said unto them, Verily say unto, unto you, uh, that uh, I do not know you, I know you not. Watch therefore, that you neither know the day or the hour that the Son of Man cometh. Okay? So that is the story of the time. I want to take both this passage of scripture and then begin to speak about the rapture. So the, the, the rapture is a very important uh, uh, doctrine, you know. That is what we Christians look forward to. Uh, Christ, those who died in Christ, uh, uh, when a person dies in Jesus, amen, uh, you go to be in heaven, your spirit, okay, your spirit, uh, the eternal part of you goes to be with the Lord, amen. Uh, and there are people when on their deathbed they have seen angels come and, and escort them and take them to heaven. Amen? Amen. So their, their souls is transported to heaven to be uh, in the presence of God. Uh, but uh, that's another thing for those who are living uh, and, and we are not dead and we have received Christ and we are living for Jesus. The Bible says there come a day when uh, Jesus himself will come uh, and, and he will take us uh, uh, to his heavenly abode. Amen. And the Bible says in that day when Jesus appears, uh, our mortality will put on immortality. Amen. Mm -hmm. We will become, our bodies will be changed. Amen. And we shall be like Jesus Christ after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible says he's coming to take us uh, uh, to be with him. The way he is, we shall be also. So the story of the ten virgin is, is about uh, 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 two set of believers, if we can say that, and one who wise and one one is not wise, and uh, so that is uh, a fulfillment. And the third thing I want to say to you, when you read the book of, I'm not going to go through the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, you know, uh, 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 John says uh, about uh, what the Spirit of God says to the ch churches, and he said, uh, when Jesus comes, he's coming for a reward. I bring my reward with me. Amen. Christians are called, I have to be rewarded. Amen. That's a reward for every believer. Uh, one reward is our presence to be with the Lord, to be in heaven. Uh, but there's another reward too, is the things that we've done on earth. Amen. Unto his name. So those are the uh, things that I just want to highlight in, uh, 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 as, a, as a broad uh, uh, as a broadsheet approach to that and uh, so that's what rapture is all about so we all are looking forward to towards the rapture and, and as i want to say that uh, 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 i want to share a couple of things uh, uh, my my revelation so i'm not the it but i just want to share with you what i believe spirit of god is speaking to me about those things and uh, I, I want to say that uh, that uh, the, the, uh, some requirements, hallelujah. Why do I say, say some requirements? Because the Bible in the ten virgins speaks about the virgins or the church as the wise virgin and the foolish virgins. Amen? Yes. There's a lesson to be learned there. Amen? Uh, the wise enter into God, what God has prepared for them. The foolish do not enter into what God has prepared for them. Amen. That's why the Bible differentiates between wise and foolish. So as believers, we can be wise or foolish. But God desires that every one of us to be wise. Hallelujah. Especially in these last days when you're waiting the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, the church actually needs to walk in wisdom. Hallelujah. We need to be wise. And uh, uh, God has given us the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And he will help us. Uh, but we need to determine ourselves, you know, uh, to, to, to be wise, choose to be wise. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you are not wise, choose to be wise. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says God will grace, give, gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. If you are humble and if you see, if you are, and any man asks for wisdom, God does not hold it back but give it abundantly. Amen. One scripture says, the translation of this, if you ask God for wisdom, it says that God will not scold you. Amen. One of the different translations God, which means God is more than willing to give you. And we need to live wisely in these days as we see uh, evil uh, prevailing in the church as the Antichrist is, is rising and, and nations are being affected. A, little, a lot of different things are happening. And uh, 
uh, you know, most of us wake up every day and shake. How many of you are shaking your head every day? What's happening? I can't believe it's happening. How many of you are saying that? I can't believe what I, I'm seeing in the media, what I'm hearing with now. I can't, I just, you know, it, it's kind of, actually it's a shock to my system. I never thought I would live in these days. I thought these days will appear about 30 or 40 years late down the track. But it is appearing in our time. And every day is a new challenge. Amen? Every day your, your faith is being shaken. Every day, you know, like two pastors. A pastor in Canada, a pastor in Victoria, uh, East Australia, being thrown into jail. And, and the way they were arrested, they were arrested like they were terrorists. Can you be that? It's not just the arrest. Amen? You know, just handcuff or... No, the way they were arrested, they were arrested like they were terrorists, amen? And, and I thought that, man, I can't believe that they will do to a man. I mean, uh, you know, he's feeding the poor and the homeless, and you know what I mean? Uh, what kind of a terrorist is that, you know? But that's the way they treat a person with compassion and mercy. I can't believe it, you know? So we're living in a, uh, in, 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 in a very uh, uh, difficult times, and we need to be wise. Pray for wisdom. Can I just say to you, daily pray for wisdom. You really need heavenly wisdom. You really do. In every area of your life, you need heavenly wisdom. Amen? Uh, you need the Holy Ghost to lead you. But uh, I want to go on to just talk about today. We'll talk about other things next week. Uh, uh, but today, how to, uh, how to prepare for the rapture. How to be rapture ready. How many of you are rapture ready? Okay. A few of you are rapture ready. Hallelujah. Others, you are not. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are just going to rapture ready. I like that verse. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. We all want to be, be caught up in the cloud with the Lord Jesus. Uh, but I just want to bring out some things. Uh, uh, wisdom. Amen. Wisdom. Okay. God to be wise. Amen. You may be a believer, but you got to be wise. Uh, I want to say that uh, some of the uh, requirements, uh, some of the things that God looks for, God, uh, 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 you know the story in the, in the Bible that the guy came for the wedding, but he did not have the wedding feast, and he was chucked out. Remember that? How many of you know that story? Guy came for the wedding, did not have the wedding feast. They chucked wedding garment. Uh, yeah, wedding garment, and he was chucked out. And uh, so which means uh, uh, there is a standard. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to speak about the standard, all the requirements. And as I speak about all uh, these requirements, uh, we are all uh, uh, fulfilling the requirement uh, to a certain level. Hallelujah. So all of you, if you are a child of God, especially if you are in Coastal Life Church, hallelujah. Amen. With the kind of preaching we do here. Amen. If you are coming for more, which means you are... You, you are rapture ready to an extent. Hallelujah. You are rapture ready. But uh, I still want to speak about certain pertinent things that has got to do with rapture and that we need to ask ourselves. So you just need to put a tick as I cover different points. Just put a tick along it to see whether you are in that category. You may and you may be partially be in that category. Uh, but uh, the, the rapture is the fullness and, and we will go into that. Second thing I want to say, just even before I go into all the things that I'm going to say, is that uh, it is going to be a work of the Holy Spirit to get you ready. So listen to this: to get you ready for the rapture is a work of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and your part is to be willing. Amen. Your part is to be willing, but it is His work, the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit actually has come to earth to prepare the bride for the bridegroom. Yes, That's why the Holy Spirit is here. He, his job, amen? His job is to prepare you for, 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 for heaven, is to prepare you for, if you're still alive and Jesus comes, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be caught up in the air with him. So the first thing uh, I want to uh, bear that in mind, and all of us are partially fulfilling the requirements. And I, and, and I, maybe I'll just say it right now, uh, is that, that I believe this is my, okay, this personal conviction. My personal conviction is that it's going to, there's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit of God upon planet Earth. God is going to re-baptize a believer, which we baptize 
him in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and uh, when, that's what I mean. We are going to be touched by the Spirit. Yes. And God, by the, the Bible says, the glory of the Lord shall fill the earth. That's going to happen there. And uh, that will help to do some things uh, in our life to prepare us for his second coming as well. Yeah. So there is a work of God yet to be done. So when we pray for revival, we are praying for, in fact, in the, the, this last day's revival, we are praying for God's finishing work. Hallelujah. Yeah. His finishing work. Yeah. And when the Spirit is poured out in the last days, uh, it shall be a finishing work. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, they say that, uh, and I want to say this uh, before, you know, when the, when the porter, when he's finished with the vessel, then he begins to glaze it. Yes. The glazing yes. takes place. Amen. Yes. Once the glazing takes place, it's finished. Yes. So we are, the glazing, I believe, is the work of the Holy Spirit, a pouring out of the Spirit of God uh, upon the body of Christ, uh, where we are going to be glazed. Hallelujah. Yes. We are glazed with the glory of God. And uh, we, the, the work is going to be finished. Hallelujah. And uh, God is going to pour out something. So I'm a firm believer. In, in, in a coming revival because uh, uh, what will get us ready is not our self-effort and we will have to do some things because we are accountable, our hearts and all that, but also the work of God. Hallelujah. Mm. The church started with a Pentecost. The church will end with a Pentecost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So my confidence is I'm going to do the best I can but I'm also believing that God will come and finish the work. Jesus said, I'm the author and the finisher. Hallelujah. So a lot also uh, depends on the Lord. And, and, and he, he'll pour, 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 glaze the body of Christ. Hallelujah. That we are looking beautiful. We are looking and uh, we become a, it's a finished work. Hallelujah. Finish. He'll finish the work. He will do it. Amen. That's what the glory is all about. That's what revival is all about. Hallelujah. We do our bit, but more important than his bit. Still introducing you to the whole concept of, uh, of uh, rapture. So the first thing, so I'm going to talk about requirements now. I mean, tick it off as we go. <coughs> the first one the Bible says is that, that uh, behold, the bridegroom cometh. I'll have a warm water, uh, Daniel. Thank you very much, man. Have some warm water. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. So, in the story of the ten virgins, uh, 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 so at midnight, at midnight, most of them are asleep, or you know, but there usually there's a watchman watching over the city. Hallelujah. And uh, those days we talk about towns and small villages. At the age of it, uh, so I want to actually describe the Jewish wedding. Only part of it I want to touch, you know, the whole of it. Uh, is that, that uh, the bridegroom comes uh, to take the bride and uh, it, uh, uh, it, 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 it happens in the night. Hallelujah. It happens in the night. and. Uh, so, and the Bible says here, at midnight, at midnight the bridegroom cometh. And as the bridegroom cometh, there is a shout going forth saying, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Mm -hmm. Amen? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. So, uh, this probably is somebody who's living on the outskirts of the town or he's seeing the wedding party approaching. He can see it far into the distance because they'll be carrying torches and lamps and the bridegroom will be coming with a throng of men and he sits in the behold and know there's a wedding going to take place. So the wedding party is coming and, he, and, and at midnight the Bible says so. So when it says at midnight, which means in Israel at that time, at midnight it, it takes place in, uh, at night. Do not know exactly when, but here, according to the parable, it is at midnight. So we never know when the wedding party is coming, when the bride. So he sees that and he says, uh, he, he shouts and says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And then everybody, everybody begins to shuffle and everybody gets to get ready. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, the wise virgin and the, the foolish virgin, they all are getting ready. Now they're getting ready. First thing. First thing for the rapture. Mm -hmm. 
you need to hear the sound the bridegroom cometh you need to be acquainted with the voice of God and uh, a spiritual sound okay now I want to say this when uh, when in when, when Jesus comes Jesus coming will be preceded before he comes will be preceded by a shout by a trump voice of a trumpet a voice of an archangel that will come uh, go forth a sound and uh, 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 by, by the Holy Spirit as well it will go forth and those who have spiritual ears hallelujah yes. amen it's not a natural sound it's a spiritual sound hallelujah uh, the world won't hear it but the believer alone will hear it because he'll hear it with his spiritual ears he will hear it with his spiritual heart amen he is uh, hearing that sound you know behold the bridegroom cometh one of the requirements and i want to say this to you one of the requirements to be caught up with the lord in, in rapture is to be able to hear the voice of God. Amen? Amen? You got to hear the voice because the voice will precede the coming. Amen? Behold, he cometh, that the voice. It preceded before the bridegroom arrives on the scene. I want to say to you, each and every one of us, this, I'm talking about requirements now. I believe that uh, each and every one of us will need to attune our ear, ears to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. You need to be hearing. Hallelujah. So we all hear from God in different measures. Hallelujah. Uh, but I'm just saying this is a very important requirement. We are going to be people who are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. We need to be people who have spiritual ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. We need, when, the, when the Holy Spirit speaks, uh, uh, you, you shouldn't be dull, but your ears should be pricked up and be able to pick up what the Spirit of God is saying. This is a requirement Amen. for rapture. Hallelujah, it's a requirement. Amen. Because before He's come, before He comes, His sound will come. Yeah. Hallelujah. His sound will come to wake us up. His sound will come to prepare us. His sound will come to warn us. To, his sound will come to awaken us. His voice will be heard. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Hallelujah. And I want to say to you that uh, 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 only those with uh, a spiritual ear uh, will be able to hear uh, the, uh, the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Before the rapture takes place. You will hear, you need to hear it, amen? And I know that many of us are hearing God's uh, voice by spirit, but I'm putting that there uh, because uh, what does the Bible say in the book? Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. Hallelujah, yeah. amen? Not everybody, not everybody, but he who has an ear to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Hallelujah, that's in the book of Revelation. When he writes to the seven churches, you got to have a ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. you got to have a spiritual ear to hear when, when, when the trumpet sound comes. Amen? Uh, when the voice of God comes forth, it will be heard not in the natural, but those whose ears are attuned and open to the voice of God, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, you will hear. That, I say to you, is a requirement. Amen. Hallelujah. If you listen to me, if you don't hear him, you won't be caught up. Why? If you don't hear him, you won't prepare yourself. If you won't hear him, you won't even know that he's there knocking at the door. You've got to hear him. And, and, and uh, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Hallelujah. So the sound is proceeding before the bridegroom appears on the scene. And I want to say to you, uh, first and foremost, that we need to prepare ourselves and uh, uh, to, to, to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying these days. Hallelujah. That's the first important preparation. Hallelujah. Because uh, the Bible says that Jesus came to, to the nation of Israel. He was his Messiah, but uh, they did not hear him. Amen? Mm -hmm. They did not hear him with spiritual ears. Mm -hmm. 
They heard him preaching, but they, and they did not receive him. And they missed the, the day of their visitation. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus was there, but they missed it. What I'm saying that you could be here, but you might miss it. But therefore, just, you know, pray and uh, uh, that. And also, you know, we are, we are running the school of the supernatural. We will teach about the prophetic and hearing the voice of God. If you can come, come and can't be, a, can't be a part of that. But really, you need to be one that is hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. That's number one for rapture. Amen? God wants that. Second thing is... Uh, there were two virgins there. There were the wise and the foolish. Uh, the Bible says both of them had oil at some stage. Amen? Both of them had oil at some stage. But at the coming time of the coming of the Lord, uh, the one who are not wise, they, their, their oil has run out. Amen? Whereas the wise one, well, uh, they, had their, their, they, they had the oil to make that journey. I want to say to you, that uh, Jesus Christ is coming for people, for his children that are full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Your lamps need to be filled with oil. The lamp is your body, is your soul, is your being. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You need to have like you got to have, uh, you can't leave off old oil. Amen. 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 Old oil also will run out of. Listen, oil have a season. Oil is not forever. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, uh, "God give me fresh oil," because old oil get used. And what is old oil? All old oil is somebody living by their past experience. I've been born again. I have received Jesus. Holy Ghost is in me. Yes, 30 years ago, and uh, I go to church. Yes, I'm a child of God. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and you got, no, but, but, but there's no freshness in you. Uh, you're not experiencing uh, the life of God. Uh, so that experiencing the life of God is between this to that, you know. But somewhere along the line, we all know. But uh, you need to have fresh oil. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the wise virgins were, were those who are full of the Holy Spirit who are full of the Spirit of God, full of the anointing of God. Yeah. People who are alive, hallelujah, who are having an encounter with God. Amen. And, and, and knowing God and feeling God and sensing God. Uh, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is alive and ready. Hallelujah. Alive. You are, you're not a religious Christian. So Jesus is not going coming for a religious Christian. Religious Christian is one, is one who once had an experience with God. Amen? Amen. At what one time he had an experience with God. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So for them, yes, I know that Jesus is Lord and you believe in that and, and, and he may even come to church and all that. But uh, 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 it, it's not living oil. And uh, the Bible says here that they were full of the, they had the oil in their lands. Hallelujah. You need to have the oil. You need to stir the oil in your life. Hallelujah. You need to, and I know many of you are doing that, that as you pray, as you intercede, as you worship, as you seek the Lord every morning, and God is beginning to be real to you in one way, shape, form, or another. You know what I mean? God is touching you, you know. Uh, you, are, you are a lively Christian, you know. And uh, I know that there are different levels, but we all are in there, you know. We, we are there, but in a different level. It doesn't matter which level. As long as you can say, I can sense God, I can feel God, you can say, I can, God spoke to me, God impressed on my heart, uh, I, I feel the peace of God, I feel God is in control of my heart, I feel the whispers of God, or, or, or you feel that uh, when I read the word, I feel comforted by the word, somewhere along the line, uh, you are uh, you are living the faith, you are experiencing the faith, you are knowing the presence of God, and uh, uh, there is all in your life. Hallelujah. One of the things we are doing in this church, and we just, we just brought tremendous results, is uh, we've got people to pray the Holy Ghost out of their belly. Hallelujah. And many, 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 many. In fact, I just made a statement to somebody, you know, everybody who who been in the school, who been regularly, faithfully doing it, Every one of them has got a testimony to share. Every one of them. Who, who, not, not attend the school, but who've been praying and, you know, praying in the Holy Ghost at 30 minutes and 
maybe more, whatever. Every one of them has a testimony. Every one of them. Every single one of them. The aid is in their life. They're still struggling. Amen. There will always be struggles in your life. Hallelujah. But in other areas of your life, you're seeing God. You're feeling the touch of God. You feel the Holy Ghost speaking to you, convicting you. Amen. Uh, uh, comforting you. God giving you ideas. Somewhere along the line, they are connected because out of their belly is flowing the rivers of living water. And they are being blessed. Hallelujah. They're having God encounters. So the school of the supernatural is really about God encounters. When you touch God, God touches you and you know it's real. Yeah. You're not living off an experience you had 30 years ago. I went to the front of the altar and I gave my heart to Jesus and I saw a great light and God spoke to me. Wonderful. But it's not what he did 30 years ago. What is real? You need to have an encounter. You're ready. Hallelujah. You, you've got to be ready. And here the all speaks of being full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, and Jesus Christ is coming for those who are full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to define what the full of the Holy Ghost is, but uh, definitely you have that oil. You have that oil in you. You, 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 you. God's real to you, you know? And, and I want to say to you, all of us are at different levels. Doesn't matter which level you are, as long as you're in that place. That you know, some are more, some less. Doesn't matter. But somewhere along the line, you know, my Christianity is real, you know, and, and I'm it basically, uh, I sense God. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm sensing God. Mm -hmm. In whatever you do, you know, so may, uh, if you're in that place, uh, it means uh, the oil of the Holy Ghost in you. Mm -hmm. The difference to that with the foolish virgin was uh, the lamp represents the Word of God as well, you know, uh, but all represents the Holy Spirit uh, that uh, uh, they were dry. Mm -hmm. Amen? When you've got no oil, you're dry, you're mechanical, you're religious, you're going through the motion. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, you know, but you had oil once, but man, that oil has run out. Amen. You know, sometimes we go to top up the oil in our cars as well. Hallelujah. It's not forever. How many of you? Ladies know it's not forever. Amen. Ladies know that? That oil is not forever. <laughs> Men know we got to top it up. Amen. Ladies think it goes on forever. Hallelujah. No, you got to top it up. You got to top up the engine oil. Amen. So in the same way, you got to top up the oil of the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. One of the key things is praying in tongues. Amen. I found that. Uh, I found this. I reflect more and more in my life. I found that uh, I've, I've got uh, all the problems that you have, maybe twice the problem that you have, but I make sure there's always oil in the engine. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The lubricating oil of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I don't get jammed. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. There's no oil in the engine. The yeah, engine yeah. seizes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes my life seizes up. Things happen like that. Hey, jammed up because. Man, there's no oil there. Hallelujah. Make sure there's oil. Holy Ghost oil. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Worship God. Uh, but have an encounter with God. Amen. And so it came that the, those who wise virgins who had the oil uh, full of the Holy Ghost, they went into the rapture. Those who, uh, who had oil once but did not have any oil when the coming of Jesus, the Bible says they were left behind. Hallelujah. Amen. So I, I just, uh, you know, it's by way, you know, uh, don't, don't condemn yourself, don't you? And I think that if you're in coastal life, you're, you're making it. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're making it. Hallelujah. You can't be here and, and if you, there's got to be some oil in the engine somewhere. Hallelujah. Most of you are praying people. You're doing well. Hallelujah. Amen. You're doing well. You're a great God. You know, God, God is with you. I know many of you, that's why I can say, many of you, I uh, you know, uh, most of you I know, and I know you're a praying bunch, you know. Uh, I, I, as I look around, as I look around, I can say almost all of you are praying people who are moving in the Holy Ghost. Amen? So you're in good, good, good ground, good soil, you're ready for rapture. Hallelujah. But just I want to say to you, make sure that oil is flowing. Don't, don't take your eyes off it. Just pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Third thing. Yeah, I want to say is that, uh, uh, well, I've written here now, uh, those who are ready had oil in their lamp, those who are not ready, uh, the foolish one, uh, did not have oil in their lamp. So that becomes a, a, distri a distinguishing factor is oil. Amen? 
distinguishing factor is oil. The oil of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Third one. Third one I want to say is that, uh, that uh, <laughs> third one. Jesus Christ is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is not coming for the washerwoman. He is not coming for someone, you know. Uh, you know, he's looking. I mean, when a man wants to marry a woman, you know, when he comes on the day of marriage, you know, they come to the church, he looks at the bride and says, wow. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, because the bride has made herself ready, prepared herself. Amen? And uh, Jesus Christ is coming uh, also for uh, a bride without spot or wrinkle, you know? And I want to say that uh, 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 the, uh, uh, beauty has got to do with the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. With the, not the gift, but the fruit of the Spirit, uh, the character of Christ, the nature of Christ. Amen? Uh, and uh, uh, he is wanting, uh, Jesus, I know, most men and probably most women, you want a certain kind of a man in your life. Amen? Amen. And most uh, men too want a certain kind of a lady in their life. Amen? Most men, they do, you know. We, we, we like, you know, sometimes we don't get it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some people get, don't get it, you know, but at least they get something close to it. Hallelujah. Because nobody is perfect. We are in the flesh, you know, man. We all play up, you know. We, we, you know it's, and after, sometimes we find out after, after the uh, month after the wedding is not Prince Charming anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's because we are imperfect. Hallelujah. We all are, we got all our oddities and we are, we are weird. But we are also wonderful at the same time. Hallelujah. We got the good and the bad and that's okay. Uh, but I'm saying that everybody has a, a desire to, and Christ wants a, a bride without spot or wrinkle. But the difference is this. The difference is this. The difference is God is able to make us without spot or wrinkle. God, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy, no, no, not you, not you. The Holy Spirit is able, and I believe that, uh, 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 and I want to say something here. Uh, I, will, I will say it as it is. I believe, some people say this rapture will take place any minute now, and technically they're right in that sense because God can come any minute now. Uh, but I believe there has to be a work of God to be done to get the bride ready. I believe that. Because I believe that we are not ready. We are not ready. All of us, me included. Hallelujah. We are not ready. Uh, but the Holy Spirit wants to make us ready. Hallelujah. When I speak about the move of God, of the glory of God coming, the purpose is to, to make us uh, ready. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The move of God is not only just to see souls win and mm -hmm. uh, bring them into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. uh, it is to uh, make the bride ready for the bridegroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of us are not ready. Mm -hmm. We are loving. We love the Lord. We are desiring. We are doing this, but we are not ready. It takes a work of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. For you to be ready, Holy Ghost need to work on you. Amen? Amen. And I believe in the coming move of God in the years that are ahead. I don't know when it will take place. That God is going to come. He's going to visit his people. He is going to, 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 to pour in the oil and the wine. He's going to heal us. He's going to restore us. Uh, but he's going to cause the nature of Christ to come into our life so that we are a bride fit for the bridegroom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And can I say this to you? You can't do it by your own effort. Amen. In fact, as I was thinking and reflecting on this thought, I realized that, uh, you know, on the wedding day, just before the wedding day, the, uh, the, the, uh, those who help uh, the, the uh, bridesmaid, amen? I mean, they, they, they sit the bride down on a chair, amen? And they begin to go to work on her. They start doing up her hair, amen? They start doing up her fingernails. They start to get her, get 
get their apparel on, they begin to do the face. Amen. They do, they, they, they do this, do that. And, and in fact, the bride just sits there and just receives it. Hallelujah. Amen. Willingly submitting herself to the work, uh, <coughs> to the work that needs to be done. Amen. I want to say to you that uh, it is the same way uh, for, for to be a bride of Christ. But the, uh, it's a Holy Spirit that does the work. Holy Spirit that will make you beautiful. Holy Spirit that will give you the spirit of grace. Holy Spirit will give you the spirit of meekness, gentleness. Amen. Holy Spirit that will give that. And uh, it is a Holy Spirit that will work on you. So don't, don't, uh, uh, listen. Can I say this? None of us are ready to be raptured. So don't discount this. None of us are ready. Amen. We are candidates, but we are not quite there. But God will do a work in us, amen? Because he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, and he himself will do it. He himself. And all we need to do is, like the bride, uh, before the wedding day, she sits in the chair and allowed, allows the, 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 the bridesmaids to, to beautify her. Hallelujah. Uh, we just need to submit to the Lord and say, uh, God, Lord, make me, uh, uh, make me, uh, make me right. Amen. Uh, make me, and again, he, he will, uh, you know, take away the spot and wrinkles. Amen. God has to do it. So let me put the pressure. The pressure is not on you. The pressure is on, is, is on God. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. It's a work that needs to be done. But I just say, you know, but you just need to be yielded on a daily level. It's not he doesn't do it in one day, but as you yield yourself to, to God, he will begin to beautify you. Hallelujah. He'll give you a new nature. What is the beauty? The nature of Christ. How does the nature of Christ come? By the work of the Holy Spirit. Only he can bring forth Christ in you. All you need to do is to be willing and obedient. Hallelujah. Willing and obedient, and he will bring forth that. So that is the work that needs to be done. Hallelujah. For he's coming for a bride. The Bible says that. He's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. The, 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 the terms are there very clear. Hallelujah. And we yield and say, Holy Ghost, help me, Lord. And, and as we walk, as we pray, read the Bible, come to church, fellowship, do whatever you're doing, God is working on you. He is getting you ready. Hallelujah. You're submitting, but he is getting you ready. Day by day, moment by moment, the spirit of God is breathing on you and is getting. So he's going to uh, make us uh, uh, one that is, uh, 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 that, that is uh, uh, beautiful. Hallelujah. Uh, it talks about the, the, the fruit of the spirit. The next one I want to talk about is this. These are the requirements. I'm just telling you requirements. Uh, I, I again want to emphasize and say don't put yourself under any kind of condemnation or judgment because it's nothing else but the work of the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Only you need to be willing. Yes. Willingness. And say, Lord, do this work in me. Prepare me for the coming of this of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get me ready for the rapture. Lord, I submit. Show me, Lord, where I've got to change, what I need to do. Lord, prepare me. Prepare me for the day. Lord, and, and live your life day to day. Amen. Live your life day to day, just trusting God because He's helping you. Hallelujah. He's helping you day by day. Amen. And uh, He's helping you in a manner that, uh, that you may not even realize, uh, but He's working on you. Amen. The Holy Ghost in you is working on you. And you're experiencing, maybe you don't experience big changes, but the little changes. Hallelujah. And, and I want to, Christ, Christianity is all about little changes. I mean, if you've got little changes happening in your life, you're on the way. Little changes, all you need is little, you're on the way. You're, you may not have been changed radically, but you're on the way. Hallelujah. The spirit of grace is working on you. You'll be all right. You'll be okay. Hallelujah. Amen. And you, you will get there. And the uh, 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 spirit of God is touching you. Uh, he, he will know. He'll, he'll, complete, he'll complete the work. And I want to say, he'll complete the work on the day... Uh, the, the final glazing will take place on the day of rapture. Until then, the work will go on. Until then, you'll still be perfected. Until then, you'll still be changing from glory to glory, faith to faith, strength to strength. Hallelujah. We don't arrive until that day. Hallelujah. On that day, he will glaze you and, and, and you are finished work. Okay. Next one I want to say is that uh, 
So the, the, the beauty. Now, uh, next one I want to say, another two points, I'll finish this off. Uh, Jesus Christ, as I said in the book of Revelation, I'm coming back with my rewards. Hey? Book of Revelation. It talks about, for us, while we are here on earth, waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we have, and this is what I want you to pray about. Those of you who want to be caught up in the rapture, this is what I want you to pray about. I mean, the other soul, I believe it's already happening, and maybe this is happening, I don't know. But I'll tell you what it is, and you pray about it. There is a divine assignment for your life. Amen? When he comes, he wants to find you working. You are about the master's business. You are about the father's business. You are doing what God told you to do. Amen? You are busy in your allotted sphere of ministry, assignment, whatever it may be that God is calling you to do. He wants to come, and when he comes there, you are about the father's business. Just ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what is my divine assignment? If you don't know, fine. You need to have a prayer going on before the presence of God. God, what is my divine assignment? Paul has his assignment. Peter had his assignment. Hallelujah. Philip had his assignment. And uh, 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 the what's the name of the lady who made clothes? Garments for the world? Dorcas. Dorcas. Dorcas had an assignment. Amen? Dorcas, what's the assignment? What's a spiritual assignment? Making garments for the widows. Assignment. Assignment is something that God has got for you to do on earth while, while uh, he tarries. Hallelujah. And I want to ask you that uh, he, when he comes, we need to be about our assignment, doing the Father's business. And something specific, something that God has put on your heart to do. God is saying that, uh, I want you to do this for me, you know. Uh, it, 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 it might be a simple thing, you know. It might be feeding, feeding soup kitchen, you know. It might be just whatever it is. And it can be any one thing or, you know, something that God has put on your heart. And that becomes his assignment for you, amen. Uh, you need to be about the Father's assignment. So I want to ask you, for those of you who are waiting for the rapture, I want to ask you this question, what is the assignment? And that's what something for you to think, reflect, and pray about. You must be found doing the Father's will when He comes. Amen. 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 It'll be a simple thing. Listen to me. It'll be a very simple thing. A very simple It's not a big thing. It's sort of a simple thing. He won't say, go, go to Macedonia. He won't tell you that. You know, you will not go to China. He won't tell you that. It's somewhere around where you live, just around that area. Hallelujah. Maybe it's in the school. Maybe it's in the community. Maybe it's in, 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 in your household. Hallelujah. Uh, Susanna, the wife of uh, John Wesley, uh, so, was it John? He said her assignment was for the children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you are a mother here, mm -hmm. your assignment may, you know, your young mama or whatever, if you are, your assignment might be children. Whatever God told you to do, hallelujah. Don't try to do anything. Just the one thing. Whatever the Holy Spirit is prompting to you to do, do that. That is your assignment. So for those who are waiting for the rapture, you should be engaged in the assignment. Hallelujah. Why? He says he's coming with his rewards. Amen? And what does he, Jesus say? And, uh, and he, he says in the, in the book, Jesus said, uh, and, uh, come in, listen to me, come in good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. Hallelujah. For many of you in this church, it's intercession, so don't kind of get yourself all you know, many of you, it is intercession as well. So that's that fine. But in Jesus tells, come in good and faithful servant. A servant is someone who's done something. Hallelujah. You've done your assignment. Come in, you who have finished your assignment, enter into your rest. Hallelujah. You've got to do your assignment to get into your rest. What's your assignment? Think about it. Don't be condemned. Don't, don't, just, we don't know. You're not too sure, just pray, Holy Spirit, uh, what is it, what must I do? That's what Paul asked on the road to the mountain. What must I do? Mm. Eh? Mm. What must I, what do you want me to do? You've encountered me, what do you want me to do? Just ask, and whatever comes to you, 
I just do it. And if you if you need help in that area, come and see me. Hallelujah. We'll have a chat, you know. But you must be busy about the assignment that God has. Might be a prayer assignment. Amen. For many of you will be a prayer. That's an assignment. You're on the ball. You're praying, you know. If you're an intercessor, you're on the ball, you're doing it, you know, you're witnessing it, doing it, uh, working in the community, doing it, you're serving the church in capacity, I don't know, but whatever it is that God has planned for you. Now, next point, and I, and I want to uh, say is that, so first one is divine assignment for the rapture, hallelujah. The next one is divine alignment. Amen. A divine alignment to be uh, to be in the place that God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Just like this finger, this little finger, this little finger has got a plan and a purpose. God has got a plan and a purpose. But if this little finger, instead of being in the palm, you know, being in the palm, because then in the palm it's also helping everybody together as well. Instead of this link, little finger ends up near the knee sticking out like that. Amen? Right? You're out of alignment. You're out of alignment and, and I just sense that uh, God is uh, wanting everybody to be found. You know when he, when he created uh, the, the, the nation of Israel when he formed you know uh, all the 12 tribes they somewhere in the front Somewhere on, at the back, amen. God assigned it, right? Somewhere in front, somewhere at the back, somewhere on the left flank, somewhere on the right flank. In the middle was the tabernacle. Hallelujah! They were all found in their place, and in the place that, where they were, they had a function to fulfill. Hallelujah! Uh, the Levites were found in a certain place. Judah was found in another, another. Uh, your alignment be positioned hallelujah be placed be planted be in that place where god called you to be amen remain in that place be faithful and i believe that uh, <clears throat> that uh, uh, that is that is just just as uh, important so uh, uh, so I, I i just written that uh, uh, to be in divine alignment and not just believe because we are all believers. Hallelujah. But alignment is where positioning yourself. And in the, when you position yourself, then you can do the assignment. Hallelujah. I mean, if, the, if this little finger is, is here, it has got an assignment. It's working with the rest. Hallelujah. They all work together. Hallelujah. It's an assignment. But if it is st sticking out here, you know what I mean? It is, in a sense, in the body, but it's not doing the job it's supposed to do because it is out of kilter. Yes. Amen? Yes. Out of kilter. You can't yes. function properly if you're out of kilter. Yes. Amen? We need to be in the right place. Eh? And, uh, <coughs> Amen? So I just want to... The point I want to say is that first thing is to hear the voice of God. Hear the sound. Behold the bridegroom cometh. Second thing you let your lamps be filled hallelujah yes. your lamps be filled be full of the holy ghost third thing is that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a bright without spot or wrinkle yield yourself uh, he's the one who will make you uh, make you beautiful uh, number four is that uh, be in divine assignment doing the lord's will till he comes hallelujah yes. doing the lord will till he comes you got to be doing eh? yes. and uh, uh, the, the fifth one is divine alignment, a uh, properly positioned. Hallelujah. I believe it's all important. Eh? And then I believe this is one way we can prepare ourselves. And uh, I want to say to you as I conclude now that God helping you, you will get ready. You can't do it on your own. No matter how hard you try, you can't do it on your own. But the Holy Spirit wants to help you so that you are, uh, 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 you, you, you are rapture ready. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. I like the term rapture ready. <laughs> Holy Ghost wants to make you rapture ready because it's his job to prepare the bride for the bridegroom. Amen. It's his job. Hallelujah. 
All we need to do is to yield to the Holy Spirit yeah. and say, God, uh, help me. Yeah? I am willing. Show me how to hear your voice. God, well, let me be filled with you. Lord, uh, beautify me. God, give me my job description. Lord, plant me properly. Lord, I'm trusting you. And as you do that, uh, you, you will get ready for the coming of the Lord. Let's send to our feet right now. We're finishing and I uh, just want to pray over you uh, this morning. Mm. Hallelujah. Chibi. Amen. Just, just close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord. Uh, we just going to pray and uh, ask the Holy Ghost to help us. Amen. It's not your effort. It's His grace. Amen. Ask God to help you. No point saying I'm waiting for the rapture if you are not ready. There are many Christians, you know, I just want to say as I conclude, you know, I know people who are outside of the church, they don't go to church and they listen to, to some things on the internet and all that and they, they are saying that they're waiting for rapture, going to, I'm going to, I, I, I don't believe that they qualify for rapture. Not in a way of condemnation, but I'm saying that you've got to be part of the body. Hallelujah. You've got to be properly and, 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 and you need to be you do not forsake the assembling of the saints. You know, you've got to mm. keep the word of God mm. uh, for God. Father, we pray this morning. Father, we lift up, Lord, each and every person that is here. Lord, we know that your, your, your coming is soon, Lord Jesus Christ, as we see world events. But, Lord, we want to be the wise virgins, Lord. Lord, sometimes we are foolish. Sometimes we are so engrossed in the, 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 the thing that is perishing. We are not uh, focused on you. Lord, help us. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you, God. Let our cups be full, Lord. Lord, let our cups be full today, Lord God. Lord, anoint us a fresh, fresh anointing, Lord. Fresh anointing oil over every person, Lord. I pray, my God, that they will find the assignment. Holy Ghost assignment. What is it that you want them to do, Lord? What's the job description? Lord, I thank you for that. And I pray, my God, that they, they will be planted, Lord. They'll be rooted. They'll be granted. They'll be positioned, Lord. They'll be aligned according to the will of God. And Father, I thank you, God, they'll be found pleasing in thy sight. Thank you, Lord. Let us make us to be wise virgin, <laughs> not foolish virgin. And because it is your desire that each and every one of us meet with you in the air. We pray a rich blessing for each and we thank you, my God. We thank you for Kursala. We thank you for the, the intercessors there. We thank you for the different people who are here. Lord, uh, some are working, some are praying, some are giving, some are uh, fellowshipping. Lord, I uh, thank you, God. I pray that you'll knit us into a, a, into a body, Lord, that is ready at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap of praise.